In today's video, we are doing three different ways that you can time track using Notion. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see which one suits you best. Okay, the first one is going to be the most complicated. So we are going to create a new database here. So I've done forward slash data, and then I'm going to click on table view. Now, if you already have a task list, you can use that. But for the sake of this video, I am going to create a new database. Click on that and type task list. Now, in order to make this, we're going to be working with a few different properties. So first, I'm just going to delete this tags property. So I'll just delete property. So the first thing we're going to do is click on the plus and create a date property. So this one here, click on that. So this will be the start time. So I'm going to just write start time. And then we will click on the cross. I'll just make this smaller and now click on the plus and do the same thing, but do an end date. So again, we're going to click on the date property and then I will call this end time. So these are date properties, but they will work with time as well. Now, the next thing we will do is create buttons and these buttons will say, hey, let's start this timer and hey, let's end this timer. So we don't actually need to see these properties. They are just going to be working in the background of this database. So what I can actually do is right click here and do hide in view. Same thing for this, right click, hide in view. You do not want to delete because that is saying, I don't want this property at all. We just don't want to see this property. So hide in view. But if I click on open here, for example, you can see it's still here, it still exists. All we're saying is in this view here, I don't want to see these properties. Now we are going to click on the plus and we are just going to start writing button and you can see here type button. So this is a new function. So if you've seen older videos with time tracking, it's not going to be as simple as it is today, which makes it really helpful. So this button is going to be the start time. So we're just going to write start. So the rule we want here is when this button is clicked. So when you click on start, then we want it to do this. So this action will be when you click on that, then the start time will start and we want it to start now. So the rule here is when this is clicked, then start the time now. Then we'll click on cross here. We can make this smaller. Now click on the plus and we're going to do the same thing here. We'll write button, but we are going to do the end time. So I'll name this end. So the rule here is when this button is clicked. So when this is clicked, then what we want to happen is the end time is activated. So we'll click on end time and we will do now. So click on that and then we can click on cross. So now we have a start and end. Now, the last thing we want is a formula and this formula will show us the difference between the start and end time. So we'll click on plus here and then write formula or you can scroll down and see formula here. So we'll click on that. Now formulas can get very confusing in Notion. So I'm going to walk through it and hopefully it doesn't seem as daunting, but I totally understand it can be confusing. So we're going to click on this space here and it's basically like writing code, uh, but just a bit more simple. So the formula here will be date between. So as you start writing that, you can see here functions comes up. So we'll click on that. And we want to know the date between the end time. So I'll click on that. Then I'll do a comma because we want to know the date between the end time and the start time. So I'll click on that. Now we have to tell it how we want to see this information. So we are going to do another comma and then do quotation mark and write minutes. So the formula here is quite simple. It is just show me the date between the end time and the start time and show it to me in minutes. And then we can click on done. So now we can rename this as well from formula to minutes and just make that smaller. So now when you click on start and then click on end, it's going to show up. So I'll just start the timer here. I'll do blah, blah, and then click on start and then wait a minute. One minute later. And then I will click on end time. Click on that and now as you can see it shows up it has been one minute now a few things to bear in mind with this formula i'm just going to copy this formula and paste it down here now a few rules with this if you have start time and end time mixed up so i'm actually just going to delete this if you do start time first and then end time and then click done it's actually going to show up minus one so all of your times will be in minus you want to make sure that the end time is first and then start time is after. That way it knows what is the difference between the end time and the start time, not the difference between the start time and the end time. It's a weird little rule, but that is how that works. Also, if you want, this code is in my description so you can copy and paste that. Just bear in mind prop, which means property. So these here are properties. If it's not called end time, you have to name these to the exact name. So as you can see here, it is not the prop of the start, 
So not this property, it is the name of the property of what we hid before, what we did hide in view earlier. So I'll just copy and paste this and put this back here. So that is option one for time tracking in Notion. Now the second one is even easier. I'm just going to write data and then click on table view and do a new one. So I'll click on new database and I will call this task list two. So for this one, we are going to do it manually. So this one is doing it automatically. In this one, we are going to do it manually. Now you might think, why would I want it to be manual when I can do it automatically? Well, there's actually one big reason. So I'm going to change this from tags, type multi-select to number. So I'll click on number here and we are going to rename this to minutes. So let's say I have a task here called blah, blah, blah. And I do this and let's say it takes 20 minutes. Well, what happens here is I've written the time manually, 20 minutes. If I start this timer here and then forget to hit stop, it might end up showing 400 minutes or whatever. So it's relying on you to be very specific and ensure you actually click start and click end. So if you do end up missing either clicking start or end, then you have ruined the time tracking for this. So for this one here, let's say you start at 1225 and you end at 1231 and you're like, oh, it was about five minutes. It's not as accurate as this. So it is manual, but you're not running the same risk here of missing hitting start and end time. Another reason is it's going to count every single second that the timer is on very specifically. So let's say you work for one hour, but you got distracted for 10 minutes during that hour. Well, if you're manually writing it in, you can just write in 50 minutes, but the timer is going to be very specific in the other case and say, no, that was 60 minutes and you can't actually change it. So even though doing it manually might sound more annoying, it's actually more flexible and you probably will get more accurate answers. Then what we can do here is add a formula. So right now we're seeing minutes. Let's say we want to see these tasks in hours. Well, we're going to click on plus here and we're not going to fill this out manually. So we're not going to do a number. We are going to do a formula. So I'll click on this. And this formula here, we will rename to hours. And this one is also a bit tricky. So I'm just going to paste this in. And again, this formula can be found in my description if you need it. So basically what this formula is saying is it wants to round the minutes. So we are seeing the minutes here, 20, and we want to round it into hours. So it is dividing the minutes by 60 and then timesing it by 100 and then dividing it by 100. It's a bit confusing. So you can just copy and paste this because it works. And then we will click on done. So here we can see 20 minutes is 0.3 hours. It is a third of an hour. So here, if I write 60, it will show up one. If I write 120, it will show up two. So this is super useful and it is my preferred method. I just think this is too risky. If you forget to hit start or end, then you don't actually know how much time you've been spending. Then you have a task here with a completely wrong data and it can throw everything off. Whereas here, you're not running that risk. So I use this style of time tracking in headquarters, which is my all-in-one system for your tasks. It is made for productivity. If you're subscribed, you know my philosophy on Notion is to be productive, actually productive, not to make a cute workspace that looks aesthetic, but has very little functionality. Plus it actually breaks down your time tracking into the different life buckets and projects you're working on. So I've mentioned this a few times on my channel, but I tracked every minute of my life for very many weeks and it genuinely changed my life. I realized I was spending a lot of time on the wrong projects and was terribly unbalanced with my life buckets. See, time tracking didn't just help me know how long a task actually took, but it made me reflect on my priorities because I had actual data of where my time is going, into which projects and into which life buckets. The link is in the description to my all-in-one Notion system and it's the next video coming up after this. So I've just opened up headquarters here, which is my template that I was just talking about. And I'll show you the third way of time tracking in Notion. So we are going to click here on opening calendar. So this is basically just my task list like we were working before. As you can see, it's got some other properties and functions, which uh, I won't get into this video. Again, just check out the headquarters video if you wanna see that. But we are going to click on open in calendar here. So whatever your task list is, click open in calendar. So it will then open up Notion calendar. Now, if you haven't used this before, it is an absolutely amazing tool for time blocking. So time blocking is basically like time tracking, but you do it preemptively. So you're saying, I want to work on uh, creating a new resume, for example, from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then we can drag it out and see the time like this. So because we clicked on opening calendar here, these tasks are showing up in my Notion calendar. They are connected. So this way of tracking in Notion has a very clear pro and con. 
The pro is I can very clearly just see my week. So if I can drag everything out like this, I can see, oh, okay, I'm doing this at this time. I'm having coffee with Charlie at this time. I can just see my entire week laid out, which is really useful because then I know, do I have too much on my plate? And when am I actually doing everything? So the downside is if you are planning your week like this, then in headquarters here, if we click on create new resume, we can see here from time 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., but it is not tracking in these. However, if you do want to see the difference between this time and this time, we can create a formula. We will just click on add a property and click here on formula. So we'll write formula and click on that. Now I'll just call this property minute. And here we are going to paste this. So this line of code is available in the description once again. And basically it is just saying, show me the date between, so the time between, the date end and the date start in minutes. And then we can click on done. So as you're seeing here, the time from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. is in minutes. So if you're the type of person who religiously uses Notion Calendar, then this is a really good way of doing it. But because everyone isn't using Notion Calendar super religiously for every single task, then here we just have this and it just makes it a bit easier. But again, if you are very strict with using Notion Calendar, then that is how to do that using this code. So they were the three different ways that we can do time tracking in Notion. If you found my headquarters template interesting and you wanna learn more, then click on this video here. It is my all-in-one system for Notion made for productivity first. If you want to see the highest returns and reflections based on time tracking, you will love this template. Thank you so much for watching.